And those of you who are here in the sanctuary, we want to say thank you as well, and God bless you. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning will be coming from Mr. Cedric Tucker. Let's welcome him by saying amen. amen. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. 
and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comp comprehended it not. Therefore, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but he was sent to bear witness of the light, that the truth of the light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. We just read John first verse through the twelfth verse. May the Lord bless, add a blessing in the reading of his word. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Father, we come thanking you, oh God, for another day. Oh God, we thank you, Father God, for another week, oh God, that you allowed us, oh God, to come to your house of worship, oh God. Father, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, you've been so good to us, oh God. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we just want to say thank you once more and again, oh God. Father, we ask right now, Lord God, that you be with the speaker on this morning, oh God. Touch him in a mighty way, oh God. Hallelujah. Be with those, Father God, in the nursing home and hospitals, oh God. We ask right now, Lord God, that you soothe their pain, oh God. Touch them in a mighty way, oh God. Hallelujah. Be with our praise team on this morning, oh God. Our musicians, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask right now, Lord God, that you be with our bishop, oh God. Our first lady, oh God, on this morning. Continue, Father God, to give them, oh God, what they stand in the need of, oh God. Hallelujah. Be with our children, oh God. Oh Lord, they need you right now, Lord God. Oh, we all need you right now, Lord God. Oh, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, Father God. Glory, hallelujah. Father God, we'll be so careful to give you the honor and give you the glory. Father God, we ask it all in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Praise the Lord on this morning. Praise the Lord. We're here to lift up the name of Jesus today. And we encourage you to worship with us. Put your mind on Jesus. Yes. Forget about everything that happened before you walked in the door. Forget about what's waiting on you when you get home. Right now, it's the time to worship. Yes. We invite you to lift your hands if you want to. Use your mouth, whatever you need to do to focus on Jesus. That's what we're here to do on this morning. Thank you, Jesus. I call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are and holy you be. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I call you holy God. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy. Yeah. 
say with me. So many doors you've opened, so many ways you've made, so many times you've given You've been better than good. Yeah. You've been better than good to me. So many doors you've opened, Jesus. So many ways you've made, so many times you've healed you've me. You've been better than Jesus. good. You've been better, better than good, good to me. me. So many doors so you've opened. Many doors. So many ways you've so made. Many ways. So many times you've oh, healed you've me. Been better. You've been better than good One to more me. Time. So, so many doors you've so opened. Many ways. So many ways so you've made. Many times. So many times oh, you've healed you've me. Been better. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been, yeah. You've been better than good to me. You have better than good to me. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good. With me, please. You've been tell it to Jesus. So good. Hold your eyes and tell him. You've been oh, so good. You've been of me. You've been so good. Oh, you've been so good. Last time you've been. You've been so good. praise. Give him praise. He's moving right now. He's moving in the midst of your praise. He inhabits the praise of his people. Let him do it. Let him do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we prepare to go into the word of God, this last song I just want you to hear the words that we're about to sing in this last song. It's a simple worship song. It's an old one. You might know it, but I just want you to hear the words. It says, God is the joy and the strength of my life. If you've ever been weak, if you've just been tired, you know, you just told God, I'm tired. He is the joy and the strength of your life. He removes all pain misery and strife he promised to keep me never never to leave me he'll never ever come short of his word hallelujah thank you jesus god is the joy and the strength of my life he moves all pain misery and strife he promised to keep me never to leave me he'll never ever come short of his word i've got to fast and pray stay in the narrow way he'll keep my life clean every day i want to go with him when he comes back, I come too far, and I'll never turn back. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He removes all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He'll never, ever come short of his word. I've got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way. Keep my life, keep my life clean every day. I want to go, I want to go with him when he comes back. I've come too far. And I'll never turn back. 
God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He'll never, ever come short of his word. I've got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way. Keep my life clean every day. I want to go with. I want to go with him when he comes back. I've come too far and I'll never, never turn back. God is God is. Oh yes, he is God. God is, one more time, God is, yes, God is, what is he to you? God is my all and all. One more time, God is, God stop for me. Just get myself situated. How many people know that God is on my all? If God is your all, I dare you to stand on your feet and give him a praise. I dare you to give him a praise. I didn't say me or anyone else, else a praise. Give him a praise. Amen. Amen. Before you see that, we were on the way down and I didn't say it in the car of the month and, and, um, and Caldwell, but we got here and was at 20 interstate's blocked off and that that looked fatal that that car that looked like a fatal accident normally they don't block it they don't shut it down the way they did we come up and down that road every week i come down sometimes multiple times a week and god's grace covers you even when you don't think about little stuff like accidents and to come down that road and to see that car i said jesus christ man god is so good so we, when, you, when we think about the things that God has done for us this week and last week, it shouldn't be hard for us to give him a praise. Bishop has had a rough year, but I got emotional sitting on the drums. I got, I got up and went to the mind. I said, man, there's over there clapping. Bishop clapping, singing. I said, man, we got, we got a reason to give God some praise. And if you know, you know. Some of y'all ain't been to church, so you see it online. You ain't seeing the stuff we see. Bishop has had a rough year. But he was over there giving God the praise and the honor. I, I got a little choked up. <laughs> I said, man, God is good. God is good. Hey, Amen. Why are you standing? Go greet somebody that you didn't wake up next to this morning and tell them it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. The criteria is you didn't, have, you didn't see him this morning. Go find somebody. Find somebody new. So easy. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> easy to love. Jesus in me. Jesus in me. Loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me. Loves the Jesus in you. So easy. Jesus 
in me. Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you so easy. <laughs> Amen. Let's put our hands together and give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. We thank you, everyone that's logged on online on Facebook and YouTube. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you to our visitors. People are here visiting with, with us. I don't think it's the first time. We thank God for you. Everybody turn around and look at them. Say thank you for being here today. Amen. 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 I love technology, but I, I promise you, I don't want to be in here by myself either. <laughs> <laughs> Truth be told, we're going to say it. It's, it's good to not be in here by yourself. Amen. We give honor to our pastor and founder, Bishop Richard Johnson. Over there smiling at mama. I see you. <laughs> I see you, dad. <laughs> what y'all over there talking about? I'll tell you a quick story. We was at the house one day, and he was um, he's on a lot of medication. He was just waking up. You know, we were sitting on the couch, and um, he was ready to go get in the bed. So I was like, I'm watching TV. He grabbed my arm. Morning. He said, um, baby, I think we can go and get in the bed. I'm tired. I was like, Dad, I am not mama. <laughs> this is not Peggy Johnson. Let me get you to the back. Get your hand off my arm. <laughs> Amen. But I thank God they still showing love after all these years. Amen. So we thank God for him and we thank God for our first lady, Dr. Peggy Johnson, who's over there looking young with the hat on, chilling. Chilling. Thank God for you, Elder Donald Lamont, everyone in their respective places. Oh, boy, it's been a good week, right? If it wasn't a good week, it's only going to get better. Can't go nowhere, nowhere but up, right? All in how you see it. Um, before we go into the message, and, I, and it's not my intention to be long, I know what time it is. It's the fall. Um, we were at Super Bowl, and Matt Super Bowl, to kick off for the NFL two weeks ago. And either you feel good about your team or you don't know what to say right now. But regardless, one way or the other, by tomorrow night, it's the week three is over. So you're going to be whatever your, your record says you are. But I'm not going to keep you long because I know folks want to get together and do some brunch and then go watch your, your games. But there is a word that the Lord has given me. He actually confirmed it last night. I preached half of it last night to some friends. It came about the blue. I was like, God, you must really want me to talk about this. I'm quoting scriptures. They look at me like, man, how do you know all this? I ain't want to say, hey, I'm speaking it tomorrow, but hey, it worked out that way. But anyhow, next Sunday, look at somebody say, next Sunday. Next Sunday, we need you right back here at 10 a.m. Y'all sounds, y'all's talking soft. Next Sunday, say, even you've guessed and visited us. <laughs> we need you here right next Sunday, right back here at 10 a.m. We will be um, honoring our first lady, Dr. Peggy Johnson. We missed everything that happened in April and May, Mother's Day and her birthday, because Bishop failed and broke his hip. And they were back and forth between Atlanta, and then we had to get Bishop through therapy. So we said we were going to push it back, and we did. We held, um, held true to our word. I'm not, so next Sunday, 10 a.m., we have guests coming from out of town. Mother um, Jacqueline Grant will be speaking. I let that cat out the bag um, Tuesday. So please be in place so we don't have visitors here and y'all ain't here. Amen. I have no problem saying that. We need y'all in the place. Amen. All right. Um, and um, bishops, um, I guess it's kind of like anniversary Founders Day is going to be the last Sunday in October. So go ahead and mark your calendars, okay? Last Sunday in October. The same thing with him. His birthday and uh, Father's Day was a little different this year because of him breaking his hips. So we said we're going to make it up, and we're doing it all in October. Amen. All right. I'll reiterate that a little later. That's it for announcements. Um, Okay, this, this month in, at Cathedral of Faith is um, frangelism of friends, relatives, associates, and neighbors. Um, so everyone is inviting people to log on online and listen to us on Facebook and YouTube as well as come in the sanctuary. So you still got time to text somebody and tell them, hey, you ain't at church, but log on. And uh, we, we, we're um, streaming live from the sanctuary. So the Lord had been dealing with me on a couple of things um, for a while. And a lot of times, ironically, confirmation of certain things that he wants me to speak about comes from like a small group of like three or four people. Um, it's it's the, the music department. Normally I'll be talking to Lauren and Janine and Marvin about something. 
or I mentioned something to my mom and and the conversation goes, I'm like, oh, okay, you must really want me to talk about this. So this is something that's been in my spirit, but it's perfect timing because it ties into what we're um, in evangelism, on, basically evangelism. So before we go into the word, and you can turn to Romans chapter 14, I'm going to be speaking from a passage of scripture that is uniquely, my perspective on it today is going to be unique because it's something that people use and talk about in one way, but I want to tie evangelism into it as well. I want to give you some stats about where we are as a country, where we are as a world um, as it pertains to Christianity, what's happening in the world. So currently right now, there are, of the percentage of people who say that they're saved and have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, only 55%, no, 55% of that group says um, in a um, poll that they have not shared with anyone um, their Christ experience since they were saved. That means over half of people who accept God, excuse me, accept Jesus as their Savior, 55% of them, the conversation about what God has done in their life stops at wherever you receive. Everyone does not receive it except at the altar. That's a big misconception. Some people receive it at, sitting in the pew. Regardless, whenever you came to Christ, 55% of people don't tell anybody about Christ. I think, that, wouldn't you think that's a high percentage, 55%? So that means we're down to 45% of who would say anything. 55% don't say anything. Of the same group um, of individuals that they talked to, only 40% of that group shared their faith with anyone, even in their close proximity circle of influence. That's your family, you know, your friends. Only 40%, only 40 said that they had not shared the, um, the, the good news of, of, of Jesus with anyone. I got more numbers for you. As of um, 2003, 68% of Americans identify as Christian or classify themselves as Christian. And that's down um, from what used to be 90% back in the 40s and the 50s. This decline is drastically happening every year. 22% um, of people have no uh, affiliation with any religious belief. 22% of people claim to have no religious affiliation with anything. Um, they predict by the year 2070 that the Christian majority would dip below 50%, some say sooner. Um, it is a drastic decline in church attendance. In every category, in every denomination, there's a decline, huge decline in church attendance. Doesn't matter what you believe, you know, this, and church attendance is down. Now, this is where it gets dark. And I, as, as if to say, everything I said before wasn't dark. Um, Gen Z's, that's the generation coming behind us. We have some sitting here in the church today. Gen Z's, or they appear to be Gen Z's, born between 1997 and 2012. This is the first, what they consider to be native digital age. They were born into a digital age where Technology is, they, that's, that's all they know. All they know is the iPad and the iPhone. You know, we didn't have all that. All they know is the internet. They're the first digital age, but 27% of that population already has no interest in church. 27% has no interest, and they're saying that this could become the first generation to have a mass exodus from the Christian church and religion. They estimate by 2034, that's not that far, that's 10 years from now. Right? In the next 10 years, there could be an exodus of 10 million Gen Z's that have grown up watching or being forced to go to church by their parents. By the time they're able to make their own decisions, 10 million will have this, at the rate we're going now, will walk away and have nothing to do with organized religion. Now, if that doesn't startle you, I don't know what does. Now, we always thought or believed that the United States, this is a, a church of uh, Christians, but we're seeing that the, the, the decline in people's even interest in gospel, in the gospel of, of Jesus, is just, especially in the Gen Z's, it's not there. It is very tough to reach that age group because they are digitally, digitally somewhere else and it's not in church. So what, where does that leave us as a body of believers 
pertaining to our responsibility to reach people. How many people really honestly feel like you have a responsibility to share the gospel with someone? Honestly. Well, if we really and truly believe that, the only way the church is going to survive is if we start moving in action and we start sharing the gospel. So the title of this sermon today is Everyone is Invited to the Cookout. Look at somebody and say, everyone is invited to the cookout. Amen. We're going to go to Romans chapter 14. Let us pray real quick. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. Bless it. Give us a heart to receive, a mind to understand what you're saying to us. And application will forever magnify and praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone is invited to the cookout. So before we go into Romans chapter 14, I want to kind of explain what's going on here. I find this so interesting because we as Pentecostals, we speak so much about the day of Pentecost and the, we want to see a revival and want to see God pour his spirit out again. But Paul in Romans 14 is writing a letter to the church at Rome. Um, the church at Rome was started by some um, Jewish um, Christians who went to Jerusalem during the Feast of Pentecost and got saved. Some say, and very possibly during the day of Pentecost, they got received the Holy Spirit. So they're coming from Rome, going to Jerusalem to get saved. That would be your greatest example of evangelism. Like, this is awesome. They are um, Jewish descent, and they have basically changed um, and decided to follow Christ. So when they leave Jerusalem, they go back to Rome, and guess what? There's no church there, so they decide to start a church. Um, so they planted a church in Rome. Rome. Rome is the capital of the Roman Empire. The problem is, is that when you got, go back to Rome, Rome was still under the pagan and idolatry. It was a pagan and idolatry empire um, run by the Gentiles. So the gospel was not in Rome. So imagine you get saved. Anyone have that experience that you wind up in the church one day or someone in your family ended up in the church and someone invited them to service and they got saved but then they got to go back home to your environment and no one there is saved so they start they found they started a church but they had to go back to the environment where there was no christianity there so they started the church at rome and then some of the gentiles that had pagan and um, idolatrous beliefs began to get saved and then, again, wouldn't that be happy time, another example of evangelism? But that's partly what happened. But then there started to become strife. And Paul is writing this letter to the church, but I want you, these are body of believers. They're all in the church. They're all a part of the same church. But because of their different backgrounds and their different experiences, they start bumping heads in the church, in the church about what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Now, I want you to realize, this is an important part I want you to catch here. This is over 2,000 years ago. There was not 50, 75, 100 different apostolic churches or Pentecostal. It wasn't like we got it now, all these different denominations. They didn't have that many churches back then. So they come together, and they're not arguing over denomination. This, is, this passage of Scripture is not arguing about denomination. They're all in the same church arguing about things that some one could say majoring in the minors. Now, I want, to make my, I want to make this clear before we start reading. Paul is talking to them about the church, but it is my belief that if you argue in the church and you argue with your fellow saints and friends at church, you argue at home, you argue at your job, look at somebody and say, you just like to argue. Some people just like to argue. You, you can't be a person and argue at church and argue with people about every little thing and think that you, people don't see you that same way at home. You're, gonna, you, you're turning into a person that argues about a lot of stuff. And people see that you are argumentative about everything, especially when it comes to religion. So if you can't show love to people, your witness is dead. It dies. You can't love, you can't go after something you don't love. And we'll get to that to the, in a minute. So this is the setting as, as to what's going on. And Paul is writing a letter to the church. And this is what he says. I'm going to read you. We're going to go through verse 1 through 4 to start. And I want to read some different versions or variations because the, 
Um, the verbiage, I'm in the New King James Version, version but the verbiage is so awesome to hear some the other, um, like the message in the NIV, how they say it, it's, it's, it's awesome. But let's start at verse 1. Receive one who is weak in the faith, but not to disputes over doubtful things. For one he may have, excuse me, for one believes he may eat all things, but he who is weak only eats vegetables. Let not um, him who eats despise whom him who does not eat, and let not whom, excuse me, and let, let not him who does not eat judge him who eats, for God has received him. For, um, for um, excuse me, you, who are you to judge another servant to his own master he stands or falls? Indeed, he will be made to stand for God is able to make him stand. Now let's go back to verse one. He said, receive one who is weak in the faith, but do not dispute over doubtful things. So as I said, the um, Jewish Christians are now in Rome, but they're still Jewish. They were still raised Jewish. They were raised by Jewish laws and standards, Old Testament laws, um, kosher laws. The Gentiles that are also in the church, they have Open them. They never had the laws of Abraham. They never had the Ten Commandments. So they got saved and they operated under grace. And but the Jewish Christians are still relating back to certain things that they did when, as they were as they knew to be law as, when they were Jewish. Let me give you an example. So the example he's talking about um, disputes over doubtful things. They still practice. Um, so let me back up the. Food that was cooked, I mean, the, the food that was offered at the market, all of the animals, animals were offered up to pagan gods before they got to the market. So the Jewish Christians would go and say, you know what, I can't eat that meat because the meat was offered up to pagan gods. That's an abomination. I can't eat it. So sitting down together, and the Gentile Christian is saying, hey, I'm fine. I'm good. I can eat whatever I want to eat. And the two, whether it's not a right or wrong, but it's your perspective, are looking at each other and saying, mm, he ain't saved. You see, he about to eat that Big Mac. Let me, give you, let, me, let me break it down to you. Me and Caldwell, we go to lunch. Let me give you a real example. Caldwell, we go to lunch. Um, I'm the Jewish Christian, and Caldwell is the Gentile Christian. We sitting there, hey, man, let's go grab something to eat. We rolling, get to the restaurant. What you going to get? Because we do this like every Sunday, me and Lamont, we start, what you getting? <laughs> it's funny. But I say, you know what? I'm the Jewish Christian. Man, this food, this is, they offer this up to pagan gods, man. I'm, just give me the, the vegetable plate. Caldwell looks at me and was like, the vegetable plate? Uh, I, I want the ribeye with the mashed potatoes with the bacon on it. And then I want a little bit of broccoli. Give me that gravy with the, that you make, make with, the, with the pork. I want all of that. And they go sit down at the table and eat together. And then I'm saying in my head, you know what? Caldwell ain't saved. I just knew it. I knew he wasn't saved. You know, he came from that church with that Elder Donald dude, and they just do anything. I knew they was, I knew they was off. Now I'm confirmed they not saved. They're not saved. So we eat. And you thinking we had a good time, and I'm looking at you and saying, nah, he ain't saved. Now, guess what? Carl was talking about me, too. He's saying, man, this fool don't realize we covered under grace. Carl was like, I'm sitting at the table. God is good. Let us thank him for this food. I said my grace is covered. Carl gets off the phone. I mean, leaves lunch. He goes call the down and say, hey, man, Mike is crazy. You know, he won't eat nothing. We should have we should have just went somewhere and got tea. We could have met and got coffee. I wasted lunch with him, and he's sitting there debating with me about, you know what, the next time I ain't going to go hang out with Mike. I'm a, I'm other call, I mean, other, um, Donald, we, we just go to lunch because we have the same thoughts. I'm going somewhere with this. I ain't just being funny. We have the same thoughts. So we're going to link up together, and we're gonna, we, we just going to roll in our crew. We gonna hang with the people who don't, who only eat, we, we eat whatever we want to. I get in my car. I call Lamont, man. I call Cedric. Looking right at him, I don't see Lamont. I call Cedric. Hey, man, can't hang out with Caldwell no more. 
He up there, he at church praising God, leading the worship service, you know, opening up the service. But then Caldwell, I mean, we, when we go out to eat, he, he eating all kind of swine and, you know, stuff that we, God didn't call us to eat. So, you know, guess what? We ain't going to, I'll just go to lunch with you, Cedric. Just call him out and tell him the three of us, we just go to lunch because we can't, we don't need to even roll with him. Do you see where I'm going? Paul is talking about an issue that we can make light of and make fun of. Fast forward to 2024. How many of us have, uh, have thoughts about other things we see that we think ain't godly and you judge people and you put them in a circle in a bubble and you say they're not saved? We do it. I did it. I did it. I'll be the first to admit. I did it. I look back at myself. I was slapped crazy. I tell you, you need the Lord in a heartbeat. You need him. You need him. We do it. We do, we do it all the time. And like I said before, during this time when, when Paul is writing the letter, there wasn't 50 different churches. There wasn't 50 different denominations. Can we be real? I don't want to upset nobody. I'm trying to keep this as PG as I can because I don't want to get in no trouble. I want nobody sending no email or reaching out to Bishop. Michael just said something off the wall. Um, the apostolics can't agree on nothing. Can we call it a, call a spade a spade? The Pentecostals can't agree on nothing. We can't agree on nothing. We so far we so busy trying to hey you right and I'm wrong I'm wrong and you right, majoring in minors and guess what's being affected? You can't reach nobody when you arguing about everything in the church. So what happens if the person God says we talked about it last Sunday? Y'all don't really y'all we talk about we love David so much. No y'all don't. Because if it was a real David living in 2024, y'all would have put him under the church and buried him. If, so, if he walk in the church and somebody say somebody off the street and they got tattoos, what you going to say? What you going to say? Can you take it? What if you save him and put him in the pulpit and they preach him and tattooed up? Can you take it? Or is it that, nah, he not saved? He's not saved. So Paul, is in, he's dealing with an issue that has to do with backgrounds. People come from different backgrounds and they get saved and you're in the same environment, the same church, and you got to work together and show love. But we can't do that. Now, what I said at the beginning, now how crazy is this? And I'm going to say this several times. God saved these people at the day of Pentecost. He saved them. And the conflict comes when? After they saved from the people walking on the earth. Do we really truly want a revival? We, everybody, I've been hearing it for years. I, God, pour your spirit out like the day of Pentecost. Y'all, can we handle it? Because if he pours it out, he don't, we don't get to choose who he pours it out on. We don't get to say, God, pour it out on this person and not that person because I like the way they look and I don't like the way this person looks. You don't get to do that. You don't get to do that. You don't know what God is doing in somebody's life. You just don't know. I know someone has said it to me before. Mike, man, yeah, you, you, you're doing all right when you're up there, but you ain't never think to put on a suit. Y'all, let me, let me explain. I'm, I'm going to address that now. I'm going to tell, tell you why I don't dress up. I, I've, I had people tell me in a slick way, you know, Mike, why you, you know, I, I see where you're going. That's, I had somebody even say, yeah, it was a good sermon, but, yeah, you package a little different. I was like, I don't know what that means, but Okay. <laughs> So I'm, I'm, this is me exposing myself. I started working in retail industry at a young age. Lurie's was the best clothing store here in Columbia before they closed. I worked at Lurie's. I was 16, 17 years old, uh, 15. That's what Renee said. I told you said 15. Um, I was wearing like Ferragamos at 17 years old. When it comes to clothes, if the truth be told, especially dress clothes, I'm a little vain. Yes, Lauren, be quiet. You're not supposed to agree. But who's y'all? Oh, the amen section is amen on the wrong thing. <laughs> y'all all knew I was vain? Is that what it is? I was the only one that didn't catch on to it? Okay, Renee, I, gosh, man, let me move on. But God, I mean, this is a serious, because he, he hadn't released me to start dressing up again. He told me to not dress up when I was up here speaking. Because you need to not be thinking about what you got on. And it shouldn't be most important to you. And you need to be able to reach my mom man right here with a sweatshirt on. And you perfectly fine with your sweatshirt on. You look good, brother. Ain't nothing wrong with it. 
But you can't reach people when you over, when you think that there's only one way to come to church. You got to have this this blue suit and white shirt on, red tie for a Sunday, or is it black? Black suit, red tie, white shirt. Can't have a check in the shirt. That's all white. You can't reach certain people because some people walk through the door. They don't have a suit. They don't have a suit. I remember people saying to us because Dad was a sharp dresser. I, people have said to me when they came to church back in man. Everybody in y'all church dress sharp. I've heard people say that. So God told me, Michael, you got to let some of this stuff go that you built up over all these years about how you got to look, what brand names you got to wear. I don't want you to put it back on until I tell you. So some of you, ne I never told anybody that. That's the reason why I don't dress. It ain't because I ain't got no clothes. I got more clothes than I need. But the reality of it is it shouldn't be about what I got on. It should be about the word that God put in my heart to speak. So if you can't accept it from, it got to look a certain way, you're limiting what God can do. Can he pour out his spirit like the day of Pentecost again? And then you, he send the people here. You know, people don't believe this. God can fill this church up next week. You can come back to church next Sunday. You might not have a seat. But guess what? That don't mean they're going to look nothing like us. The, the other churches have no problem inviting us to their cookout. We should be inviting them to our cookout, too. This ain't a black church. It is a black church because that's all that's up in here. But, hey, you, it's open to white, Hispanic. It, God can fill it up however he chooses to. And we should be fine with it. So if they come up here talking Spanish, hey, when we going to get a, a translator? We going to figure it out. But are we going to be like the church in Rome? Well, he ain't saved. I didn't see him speaking to him. Y'all realize everybody don't speak in tongues in front of the church, right? My mama didn't get saved like that. She told me she didn't get saved like that. All right, let's go back to the scripture. So, verse 2, for one who believes he may eat all things, but he uh, is weak and on, eats only, only vegetables, let not him who he eats despise him who does not eat, and not let him who does not eat judge him who eats, for God has received him. Has received him. Why is it that God can receive somebody, but we can't? Now, Paul is letting us know, basically, it don't matter if you don't receive them. God has. Are, are we more Pharisees than kingdom builders? Y'all know what I mean by Pharisees, right? The, the legalistic ones that when Jesus was on earth, they was trying to tell him, you can't do this. On this day, you shouldn't be doing that. Are we more caught up in the legalistic? Are we 2024 Pharisees? And then let me throw this out to you, too, and I'll say this in a minute. Is what you believe to be sinful or not sinful, where did you get it from? If you cannot find it in the Bible, there is some room for God to convict you to the left or to the right. And that's what Paul is saying. Doubtful things in the, the translation, it's in the doubtful things in verse 1 is translated in the, in the New King James Version. It says doubtful things. In um, ESV, it says opinions. It says opinions. In the NIV, it says disputable matters. So some things that are doubtful things that Paul is referring to in verse 1 are opinions opinions and we are following men who made opinions into doctrine and you are, we are quoting opinions and telling people that you ain't gonna see God you ain't saved you didn't get it right and he's saying if God I mean Peter saying if God has received him that's enough yeah. why are you quarreling why are you arguing about this that and other why are you not inviting somebody to the cookout because they got raisins in their potato salad let them bring the raisins and the potato salad. Just don't eat it. But you can still come. You can come on. You can bring your green bean casserole. I ain't going to eat it. But you still invited to the cookout. We should not be disinviting anybody. When you start thinking that the way you see it is right, you cut people off the list. And it affects your ability to evangelize because you go out in the world and you take it with you. You look at people and say, nah, man, I ain't trying to deal with that. I ain't trying to deal with that. Oh, he's drunk. You on the street calling the Lord and can't do nothing. You ever talk to a drunk person that knew the word? And you, you thought they didn't? You been there, Caldwell? I've been there. I was embarrassed. Me and Josh talked about it. You talking to somebody and you think you tell them something. 
And this one time, I was like, man, the dude responded. I was like, oh, you know the word. He's like, oh, yeah, I went to school for it. I, I'm like, oh, he know more than me. Let me shut up. How do you know what, you don't know what people know. You don't know what God can do in anybody's life. Did he save you? Oh, y'all got quiet on that. My bad. Did that hurt too much? Did, did he save? Oh, y'all was born saved, right? Uh-huh. Okay, let me talk to y'all that grew up in the church. Like, I mean, everything y'all did dirty and wrong, we did. We did dirty and wrong. We did it in the church. Might not have been with people in the church, but we were still coming to church. So you can't act like you no more clean than the people outside the church because we was all together at the club. We just decided to get up Sunday morning and go to church. We just decided to get up. Let me, okay, the pool hall. Y'all didn't go to the club, the pool hall. Y'all was at the lounge. This tomato, tomato. Get over yourself. Verse 4, who are you to judge another servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Indeed, he will be made to stand for God is able to make him stand. He's, guess, he, Paul goes further and says, who are you to judge someone else? Who gave you the right to judge someone else? You don't know where, where they came. Some people came up in abusive family environments and they come to church and they're abusive. That's got to be trained and learned. And guess what? You are not the trainer. You ain't the person to get it out of them. It's God. Everything we do should be leading people to God, not our judgment. You get caught up. Saturday morning is the, it, in, in most America, especially in black families, Saturday morning is cleaning up time, right? Clean up time. I can tell you, I can look at my parents right here and say to them today's face, I have never, and Lamont can attest, gotten in the car and my mom and my dad were listening to secular music, ever. It ain't ever happened. Now my kids can't say the same thing, but it has never happened with them. I've never heard secular music in the house, never. So let's say God sends you a spouse and y'all both grew up in church and, and your husband's household Saturday morning was Al Green and Frankie Beverly and Mays. And they cleaning up to Frankie Beverly, rest his soul, he died last week. They clean, they clean up to listen to Frankie Beverly and, and Mays. And all you, do, all you grew up listening to was Ricky Dillard. Is it okay for you to look at your spouse and say, you ain't saved. You listening to Al Green. I ain't talking about the save Al Green, the, the one before he got saved. It's back and forth with Al. Al be saved when he's, you kind of, he fluctuate between the two. But they, they still, your husband still got up and his family went to church. They just looked at it from a different perspective. They didn't, they strong in, in the spirit, strong in, 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 in strong, but what does he call it? Um, strong in the faith. They didn't feel like listening to secular music was taking them to hell. You did. It's who's right and who's wrong? Different backgrounds. Are you going to argue and mess your household up because you cleaned up different? Is it messing with your spirit that bad? Put some headphones on. But that is not a reason to fall out with your spouse. They, are you judging that the way they grew up wasn't saved? Yeah, sometimes we do. Yeah, that, that ain't saved. You can't be possibly be saved and listen to that. Until you get a little older. I got in college. I, was, I didn't want to admit it. I was with them, them friends and stuff. be playing the old, oldies, 60s and 70s. I'm like, oh, okay. I ain't know none of them. I knew none of them. Knew none of them. Playing alone, like, man, I don't know none of these songs. The mic raise a hand too. I, I, I didn't know any of them. I'm still learning some of them. I'll be honest. I'm still, but was, was I more saved? Was I more saved? See, I'm trying to not go, I'm trying to not address certain things, and I want y'all to get caught up on, oh, where is he? What are he gonna say next? That's not the point. The point is, is make sure that what you call doctrine and what your rules and regulations are in the word. If it's not in the word, you shouldn't be. Paul's not saying doctrinal stuff. If it's not in the word and it's your opinion, you shouldn't be falling out with somebody else about it and not talking to someone else about it or judging to someone and say it's not your job. So the first example he gives in this scripture, in this passage, and we move it along, is um, eating. Let's go to verse 5. 
Because he doesn't stop there. He gives actually three examples in the whole chapter, but we're not going to read all that because y'all got to go watch football. Um, verse 5, one person esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. Hold on, hold on. So let's go back to what's, innocent, what's happening at this particular point in time. The Jewish Christians went to Jerusalem, got saved, came back. But their background, the way they were brought up, the what they were brought up to believe, some of that is still in them. So guess what technically is the Sabbath? Saturday. Mom, Dr. Johnson, excuse me, has the Sabbath prayer on Saturday morning. Sa Sabbath technically is Saturday, not Sunday. So, but the Gentile Christians are operating like the early church did 2,000 years ago after Jesus rose on that Sunday morning with all power in his hand. He got up on Sunday morning. Hey, hallelujah. They decided to worship on Sunday morning to observe Jesus rising from the dead. So they worshiped on Sunday morning. So here you are, another conflict in the church that is majoring on minors. And Paul is saying, one person is seen as one day above the other, another seems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes today, verse 6, he who observes the day observes it to the Lord. And who, who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. For he who does not eat to the Lord does not eat and give God, give God thanks. What he's saying is, what's your motive? Are you doing it to give God glory? Or are you just doing it because you don't even know why you're doing it? How many times do we do stuff that you don't even know why you're doing it? He's saying if you're going to do it, be convinced in yourself, meaning don't try to preach to everybody else about what they're doing and sending them to hell. Be convinced about what you're doing and then do it to who? Y'all talk back to me. Do it to who? So that means it ain't here. I ain't got to tell, hey, man, you wrong that you don't want to eat no, nothing but meat. You just need to be eating vegetables like me. No, it's not, that's not what it's about. It's about do what God, your convictions. That's the word I'm looking for. What did God convict you to do? And if he convicted you to do that, stand on your convictions. But don't assume that because he convicted you a certain way that everybody that do it this way is wrong. We in the body of Christ are excluding people from the cookout. God is trying to pour out his spirit on every man. And if you look at ministries where you're starting to see it, guess what it looks like? It don't look like one people. It don't, everybody don't look the same. Everybody don't believe the same. But he said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all men. Can he do it in the church like this? And could we, could, could we get with it? Because I think God is, we wants to do something, but it depends on if you can, if we can let go as a people, what we think is right and wrong. And that, let's keep reading. All right. For none of us lives unto himself and no one dies unto himself. I'm on verse seven, now verse eight. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this, for to this end, Christ died and arose and lived again that he might be Lord of, of both the dead and the living. But why do you judge your brother? Or, do, or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah, let me start. I'll go to verse 11. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. Now, what I find so interesting about this part is we are spending so much time instead of evangelizing and bringing people to the world, to, to God, so much time focusing on things that is going to, at the end of the day, be between you and God. I'm not going to be there when you answer to God. I'm not. You're going to have to hold an account for what you do. And I like this part in the scripture because this message is not a, a, a message that gives you free right to this sin or do what you think to be a sin. That's not what Paul is saying. Even further in the second half of the chapter, he talks about even more reasons why you shouldn't do some of the things you think you have the liberty to do because you might cause someone to fall. But what I'm saying is, is if you have to give an account to God for yourself, why do we spend time judging everybody? You're going to have to come before Christ yourself. 
And, 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 let me, and let me say this to you. Some of y'all are not going to like this, but it's just the truth. Um, and I'll, I'll give you scripture behind it so y'all don't go off. And you turn to Matthew, and I'll, I'll turn there and read it. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Um, some of y'all are going to be hurt when you realize that your favorite missionary, your favorite elder, district elder, I'm going to call all of them out because I want nobody to say I'm singling nobody out. Your favorite elder, district elder, suffrage and bishop, designate bishop, bishop, Board of Apostles, um, what's else, what's left? General Overseer, Prophet. Y'all gonna be hurt when you get, you realize some of the people that you following and listening to don't know God. And you making judgment on other people by what you listen and the people say, men say versus God. And the God ain't got nothing to do with the person that you listening to. He don't have nothing. Matthew 7 and 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he, excuse me, but he who does um, the will of my Father in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness, iniquity. Don't assume that people you taking everything they say to be word, God even knows them. You better get back in the word and study it for yourself. Because depending, if all you do is get the word on Sunday and go home, and you don't study it yourself, you are stuck depending on what some person says to you, not what God is saying to you. And guess what? You could be passing on stuff that God never said. And passing it on is, is law. And God is going to look at that person that you're putting all your faith in and saying to you, I didn't know him. I never knew him. Now, that bothers a lot of people because you don't want to think your favorite preacher, God, would say, I don't know you. You don't want to believe that. We don't want to believe. And it's, it's, you know when it's in red, it's, it's, it's him talking. It's in red. That's in red. That ain't Michael. I ain't make that up. That's why I read the scripture because I don't want y'all to think I'm just talking about somebody. You, you're trying to figure out. I ain't talking about nobody in particular. Whoever you into, whoever you like, God will speak through anybody. That don't mean who he speaks through knows him. So you better make sure you following the word of God and not what someone's agenda is. Some people get up and preach with an agenda. An agenda. And you hook, line, and sinker following an agenda, and follow, you forgot about follow Christ. So ensure yourself. Ensure yourself that your doctrine is secure, which leads to, and we, we, we wrapping up. I'm almost done. I told you I wasn't going to be long. This also is a warning to people who navigate yourself to the church that makes you feel good about your sin be careful that you align yourself with a ministry that's preaching sound doctrine and the word and not what makes you feel good about how you want to live today because a lot of folks have become very comfortable well i just go here because uh, they do that over here and that's what i want to do um, that ain't the word make sure Again, go back to what the scripture says. And, I, and um, he will say to them, depart, I never knew you. I never knew you. All right, that's enough. Let's read verse 12. Let me stop it at 13. So then each of us shall give an account, uh, um, excuse me, for each of us shall give an account of himself to God. I want to stress that. Paul is stressing that. He said it several times. You're going to give an account to, God, to him for yourself. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore but rather resolve this not to put a stumbling block or cause to fall in our brother's way what that means is if you know you 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 went out and you evangelized and you met old boy and y'all chilling and he used to go to the bar and drink all day and you feel like you have the liberty to go to dinner and order you a glass of Stella Rosa it might not be a good idea to invite him with you because the young man just turned his life over to God. And maybe him seeing you with your glass of wine that you think is fine is going to cause him to look at that and say, well, you know, I thought I was supposed to be different. I thought I was supposed to do things different now that I'm saved. And you can cause a person to be caught off or stumble because they think, oh, I can be saved and go back and God called them to leave from amongst what they were doing. And what you're doing in front of them is not helping. Amen. Do y'all get that concept? That's what he's saying right there. So if some folks got problems with paying cars, 
well, maybe y'all need to have the cookout, but then go in the other room and play cards so they don't, you know, that the saints in there playing the cards, y'all. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm making light of it, but that's the point, is don't let your liberty, don't let your conviction be what causes someone else to fall because you feel like, hey, I'm just free to do it. You ain't caught up to what God freed me to do. That ain't my problem. No, that's not what he's saying. He's saying make sure that what you do, how the light you carry is not causing someone else to fall. So you still have a responsibility, even if you don't want to have a responsibility, to be careful how you present Christ to other people in your actions. All right, in my conclusion, I want to take you to three scriptures. Marvin, you can play the soft music. That lets everybody know we're going home, and they believe it. Um, what's, the, what's the solution? Um, go down to verse 19. Stay in Romans 14 and 19. Um, and it, he says in verse 14, therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which may edify another. What is that saying? Is it so hard to just be peaceable amongst people, even if you don't agree? Is it, is it, is it too much to ask that you can fellowship with somebody and, and, and show them the love of God without Everything turned into an argument. Sometimes, in order to reach people, you have to get outside of yourself. And then sometimes, as you go in Christ, God will show you, hey, that was never me. And he'll take you to another place. But you got to be willing to be able to say, hey, pursue peace amongst everybody. And then when you pursue peace amongst everybody, it makes it, so, it, makes it a whole lot easier to evangelize and reach people. Um, go to Galatians, and I'm, I'm done right here. Galatians chapter 5 and 13. I'll read just two passages of scripture there, and we're done. I hope this helps somebody. Galatians 5 and 13. We'll 13 and 15, and we're going to drop down to 22. Um, Galatians 5 and 13, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Um, excuse me, for all, the, uh, for, all of, excuse me, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. Isn't that a powerful scripture? Did y'all catch that? Y'all want me to read it again? Y'all got that? I need to read it again. I think so. For you, brethren, have been, have been called to liberty. Basically saying, you've been called to some liberty, some convictions that are specific to you. That's fine. Um, only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, which is what I was just summarizing a minute ago. Don't use the liberty that God gave you as an opportunity for you to get out here and go buck wild. That's what happens a lot of times when kids that grow up in the church go off to college. And you just experience a new world, and they just don't know how to handle it. Don't use that as an experience to operate in the flesh, but, but through love, serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even, the, even in this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, but if you bite, your, uh, if, excuse me, but if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you can be consumed by one another. And let's drop down to verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such there is no law. I want you to take note that the first fruit of the Spirit is what? The first fruit of the Spirit is what? You can't love what you can't, what you don't like. Let me rephrase that. You can't love what you don't like. Don't say you operating in the Holy Spirit if you can't show love. Then I question what Holy Spirit you got. Because the, the first fruit of the Spirit is love. If you're going to reach people, and bring them to Christ, you got to reach them and show them love, even if you don't agree with their lifestyle. And then leave it to God to change them. Because guess what? For someone that will hear this, your blessing is not through conventional means. The person that God will send to you to help take you to where he wants to take you might not come from where you think it's going to come. It might come from that place or that ministry that you, oh, they ain't nobody saved over there, and you end up with the very person that coming from the very place that you said wasn't saved. How do you know God ain't trying to bless you from what you think is a curse or, or they're cursed? 
I'll give you an example. Y'all stand. Let's, let, let's go. Y'all stand. We're going to go home. It's 11.22. Y'all let us stand. <laughs> like I said, this message, I'm, I, I 100% understand what Paul was coming from. I was used to be judgmental, very judgmental. I met this beautiful young lady, and she grew up in a different organization. I grew up, came up in Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, Cool JC. Proud that I came up in it. So I met this beautiful young lady, and she came up in this organization called Koji. And I was like, man, I had my thoughts about this, that, and the other. And I started, we get on the telephone. Instead of us talking about them, how your day went in the movies and this, that, and the other, we arguing about stuff. I was starting an argument. <laughs> I was a lean reader, lean reader, um, ring, lead, ring leader, excuse me, of the argument. And, and this is why you got to be careful what you say and how you're talking about things and people. Well, you fast forward, uh, the woman I married is that woman. She was my wife. And it took me realizing, boy, what are you talking about? You sound crazy. I, I was, I re I'm surprised she liked me because <laughs> I was preaching when I went preaching. I was just only, you got to just say, you need to say, like, what do you, what, what do you, I look back now like, good God, if one of my daughters brought me home with that mess, I would have probably been like, nah, baby, I don't know about this one. They probably did say that. They just didn't tell me, you know, but then you uh, move forward like, man, what in the world was I thinking? That was absolutely ridiculous, my thoughts about things. But it came from somewhere. And like I said, the, but the example of the bubble, when I did, uh, minister, I keep calling him, Caldwell and El, El O'Donnell, is when you get caught in a bubble that everyone thinks like you and regurgitates just like you, you start thinking that there's no world outside of your bubble. And you think that God does not move outside of your bubble and that we the only ones that's right. And sometimes God will send you someone or something outside of your bubble in the outside of your bubble. Somebody sing it right now because you in your bubble. Guess what? Bishop and uh, mom, they didn't come up in the same church. Mom came up PAW and dad came up progressive. So I didn't even know that till later. I was like, y'all should have told me that. I wouldn't have been so crazy talking. <laughs> huh? and, and Baptist. Baptist and PAW. Mom well, said you know, and I say this and I'm closing. One, one, I'm not going to say the church name or the pastor. But one of the biggest helps since Bishop fell was not from anybody in a reformation that we would be accustomed to thinking would come in and what you need. It was from a Baptist church right here in Charlotte. I mean, here in Columbia. Have done everything they could for your pastor. God does not work through the mean. It, put it this way. One thing I'm starting to understand about God, if you think you know how he's going to do it, that's probably not the way he's going to do it. Yes. Let me say that again. If you think you know how God is going to do it, that is probably not the way he's going to do it. He works in mysterious ways that we don't understand. We don't know. So open your mind, not only just to reach other people, it might take you to another higher height and deep, deeper death. It might take you there. Again, I hope it's been a blessing to somebody. I, I tried to stay away from the controversial stuff because, you know, I know people got feelings about different holidays. Don't mess with me about my Christmas, man. Don't say nothing about Christmas. That tree comes up in our house in November. I don't want to hear nothing about it. Don't, don't text message me nothing about no that pagan Christmas. Well, man, I'm a, let, me, let me shut up. About to say the wrong thing. Let me move on. <laughs> Lamont, come on. <laughs> Cut my, please. Me and Lamont, we brothers, but we two different people. I say something, <laughs> and they they know I'll say something. But don't mess. Don't come at me about my Christmas. That ain't. That's I, I celebrated. That's my conviction. Stop looking at other folks cross the aisle. Man, y'all shouldn't be doing that. God, hey, that's my conviction. I'm okay with it. I love my Christmas tree. Hey, Amen. Let me move on. Let me, let me move on. Lord, we thank you for this day. We, Lord, Lord, we ask you that you give us a, a, a new way of looking at how you work. Lord, if you poured out your Holy Spirit on 3,000 on the day of Pentecost, if you did it again today, and you can do it today, anytime you feel free, we bless us to be the people that will receive whomever you pour your spirit out on and understand that it's, it might look different, but that's okay. 
It might talk different, but that's okay. But any way you bless, any way you pour your spirit out, if you receive them, we, have, we should have no problem receiving your, your child. And Lord, as a matter of fact, that's, we, that's praise God that we will be a beacon that he can pour out his spirit. And he can send people that don't look like nothing like us. And they can come in the sanctuary and be free to praise God and however they look. And we thank God in advance because we know, God, you don't do anything. You make no mistakes. You do, go, you do all things well. So we thank you in advance for your spirit. We thank you in advance for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, put your hands together and give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Hope y'all was praying for me because I was trying to not say it. It's so many roads I could I wanted to go down. But I'm like, you know what? They're going to put me out the church today. So let me shut up. At this time, it's, um, yeah, Ways to Give should be on the screen. We ask Elder Donald to come bless the offering. Amen. Let's raise the offering. Lord, we thank you, Lord, first of all, for your word. Father, we pray, Lord, that you may bless the offering on today. Bless the giver, Lord, that give. And bless the Lord, bless the church, Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, that you may bless, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, in the direction of the ushers. Just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done, you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done, you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Just want to praise you forever and, and ever. ever. And ever. Come on, for all. For all. For all you've done. You've done. You've done for me. You've, you've done, done for, for me. me. It's blessings and glory. Sings and glory. Yeah. Come on. And honor. Come on. It all belongs to him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For blessing. For blessing. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Lauren. Um, as I said in the beginning, announcements-wise, um, next Sunday, everyone, please come back. We are honoring our First Lady, Dr. Peggy Johnson. We have guests um, coming in. So next Sunday at 10 a.m., um, back in the sanctuary. This Tuesday night, we'll be going to do another Bible study on evangelism, do an example um, of a different person evangelized. Um, so um, tune in for that on this Tuesday. Um, again, Main priority, definitely, though, is next Sunday at 10 a.m. Um, come back and worship with us. And then mark your calendars. Go ahead and put it on your calendar. Um, on one of the biggest calendar days in our church year this year is October the 27th at 10 a.m., and that's when it's Founders Day. So y'all make sure for Sunday in October. That's a full month's notice from today. Amen? Amen. All right, let us stand. I think that's it. I was supposed to read some different versions um, of this passage of scripture today, Romans 14. So I encourage you to go um, in your in your leisure time, go read, um, go read the Caldwell, um, read um, the same passage, get a different perspective of it in like the NIV or the ESV version, or also even on Messenger Bible. It 
says it differently, so I apologize. I didn't get to go back to that, but I was probably thinking about time um, for the sake of time. Um, if all minds are clear, I'm sounding old school. If all minds are clear, I don't know where that came from. I, don't, I promise you, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> you, know, you catch yourself like, where did I was down to Texas? Let's raise our hands. May the grace of God rest on the Bible. Let's all say, Amen. <laughs>